What is your view on the entire corporate law, the company's law issue? On the one hand, we had a very old yes. act which is now in the process of getting notified and changed, which you alluded to in the beginning of your interview. On the other hand, we had the market regulator SEBI, which was more through listing agreements, really, so to speak, trying to enforce corporate governance here in India. But net-net, would you agree that the overall standards of corporate governance, if they need to be brought up, you need far more effective laws in this country? Look, it would be impertinent for me to make a pronouncement about that. I've only been here for a small time, but I've been, I'm here to talk corporate governance, and I'm here to talk to people about how they perceive the problems in India. And what I'm hearing is uh, that the 1956 Act is way out of date and needs to be fixed. The 2012 Companies Bill needs to be enacted swiftly, uh, but in some ways it's only transitional. Um, I think you, you, you will need to move forward. Uh, you will need to have a higher level of mandatory rules uh, in this country to get the culture right, to bring the culture up to where it needs to be. Uh, I'm talking about boardroom culture and management culture. Um, and, and you'll need to have uh, um, mandatory rules rather than comply or explain rules to get there. In the United Kingdom and in Australia, we have some important corporate gov governance principles that are only on a comply or explain basis. But the reality is, in my country, uh, those rules are complied with. The rule that requires a majority of independent directors and in independent chairmen is gospel now, and uh, mm. there are very few exceptions. Um, the, the Americans are still battling with that, with J.P. Morgan and other company, uh, companies, but we've got there, we're there. And I think that's very important for India as well, particularly in uh, corporations uh, where you have a controlling shareholder. And, of course, many of your large corporations are in that camp. The importance of having um, directors who are independent from the controlling shareholder and from management, it seems to me, is uh, essential for attracting uh, foreign capital to your market. How does the compensation work there? Because even independent directors end up getting paid a lot by the company to yeah. just attend the board meetings. How do you solve that conflict of interest? Oh, well, that's all in Australia. That's approved by the shareholders. Uh, the shareholders approve uh, a global figure uh, for um, uh, directors' fees, for non-executive directors. Um, that's revised from time to time. Uh, we try to make sure that for the large companies it's a healthy amount. Uh, uh, you won't get the right sort of people unless you pay them properly. Um, because of the amount of work that non-executive directors are required to do in each company now, uh, they can only really safely and effectively have three, four, maybe at most five boards. And if they're chairs of, of boards, maybe only two or three. Um, and so there's an essential need for proper compensation, but we don't do it on a commission basis. Uh, it's a fixed fee for non-executive directors. Seems to work all right. Uh, we still have a, a large pool of directors interested in coming along to, to sit on boards. Uh, there are quite large liability consequences for being a director these days, and our courts are mm. frequently reminding directors of that, but they still want to do it. Um, they see that they're making a contribution to society in that way, and they see that they are um, getting involved uh, at the apex of important corporations. India's getting there, of course, it's an exciting time to be here in corporate governance. I visited uh, Infosys uh, yesterday and uh, I was shown around the Bangalore campus mm. um, and luckily enough had an interview with the chief executive. Companies managed like that are really, uh, uh, I think, uh, set standards internationally. Um, they've been complying with good corporate governance rules now for a long time. The other companies in India that are not doing it need to get their act together. And, it, and the reason is, it's good business. How important is it to have an effective whistleblower policy? We are still grappling with it here. We don't have it. It's a debate raging. I'm sure even the last two yeah. days you would have read some articles on that. How, how important is it to have a very comprehensive law or legislation that allows you to encourage whistleblowing? You know what I think the most important thing is? To have a very effective corporate and securities market regulator. Uh, then individuals can quietly and uh, even confidentially um, invite the regulator to look at the circumstances that are going on in particular companies. But they need to be protected and uh, there's no doubt that you need to have an effective whistleblower policy. In the United States, that was an issue after Enron uh, in the early 2000s. We adopted a whistleblower policy shortly after that, I think in 2003, 2004. 
and there's no doubt that India requires it as well. I've been reading the press about this since I've been here. It's clearly a highly topical issue. It has to be fixed. I think what has to happen in India is that there are a lot of governance things that, they just, that you just, with respect, have to fix, get right. It's not hard to know what you should do. It's got to do it. And it's interesting that you're saying that because even at this point of time, we've just moved very recently on a reform that throws open our retail sector, throws open our mm. aviation sector to more FDI. Mm. Is the constant feeling that you get from global investors who you talk to about India just these very issues that you've talked about? Um, I think there's a concern of, uh, about excessive regulation uh, in India. Um, and I think there's a concern about good governance, about particularly the, the notorious controlling shareholder problem, uh, which means that you are necessarily buying into a minority position. And I think uh, institutional investors are always wary about putting themselves into that position. I don't talk to a lot of um, international investors, but I do talk to um, Australian superannuation funds and people like that, um, insurance companies and so on. And uh, I, think that's a, I think governance is really quite a serious concern. Now, some Indian companies don't seem to need to tap that sort of capital, but those who do need to get it right. It's been a pleasure talking to you, Dr. Austin. Thank you very Thank much you for joining me. us here on Bloomberg. It's a pleasure.